Hello there future ACCAs, I welcome you all to this session. I'm a proud friend from Vishnu Vijay and your lecturer for the Advanced Audit and Assurance paper. So folks, in this session, we will be covering an exam technique that a lot of students are curiously waiting for. Okay, folks, when we talk about the AAA exam, there are a few common questions that you can expect there, isn't it? Such as an audit risk question or a risk of material misstatement question or a substance of procedure question and even an ethical and professional issue question as well, isn't it? So in this session, we will be covering an exam technique in relation to the ethics and professional issues question that can come up in your AAA exam. Okay, folks, we will be learning as to how to effectively tackle it and obtain the maximum marks available from that particular issue as well. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. Now, before we deep dive into the exam techniques, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for more informative videos that are coming your way. Okay, folks, so let's get started with the exam technique now shall we so folks when it comes to the exam techniques of ethics questions there are a few things that you should keep in mind give okay, a few theoretical aspects first of all you have to understand as to what the fundamental principles of ethics are then as to what the ethical threats are the safeguards and of course uh, we also discussed about some uh, example situations that can come up in the exam relating to ethical issues or professional issues as well, isn't it? So keep all of these in mind, first of all, and then adopt this particular exam technique. Okay, folks? So let's talk about it, shall we? There are basically three things that you should keep in mind here. First of all, what you have to do is you have to identify the threat to independence. What does that mean? An ethical issue arises when there is a threat to independence as well as objectivity for the auditors, isn't it? So we have to identify that particular aspect from the scenario, okay? And in your answer, just briefly mention the scenario area where we where we identified that particular issue as well, okay, folks? And that's just a simple copy-paste process when it comes to the CBE exam, isn't it? So remember that, okay, folks? So identify the issue from the scenario. That's basically the first step. Secondly, evaluate the significance of the threat identified as well. Okay, what does this mean exactly? We are explaining the issue, okay, folks? So we are presenting our answers to the examiner, isn't it? So we're basically providing an explanation as to why exactly is the identified situation, how exactly does it give rise to an ethical threat, okay, folks? That is what you have to explain in the second aspect of this particular technique. And finally, what you have to do is, you have to apply safeguards or course of action to eliminate the threat or reduce it to an acceptable level. What are we doing here? We are basically providing a safeguard or a course of action. Okay, folks, it could either be a normal safeguard or a course of action which we take in such a situation to either eliminate that particular risk or to reduce it to an acceptable level. Okay, folks, these are the three things that your answer should include. Okay, folks, now let's talk about the mark-related aspects. If you identify and explain the ethical situation or ethical issue, then you will get one mark for it. Okay, folks? However, when it comes to the safeguards or course of actions, you will get more marks. Okay, folks? That's how the mark allocation works in an ethical issue. Okay, folks? So commonly, we could reasonably assume uh, a minimum of two marks available for a well-explained ethical issue, isn't it? And of course, you will also get more marks for the same issue if you can add more value to the point. How exactly will we do that? Well, we will look into that, okay, folks? So don't worry about that. Now, whenever you're reading through the scenario, identify the issue, and in your answer, point it out, explain it, and then provide a safeguard or a course of action to it as well. Okay, folks, if you provide both, then that's, that will give you more marks as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. So, of course, we can only understand as to what exactly is this technique all about by practicing a question, isn't it? So let's take a look at an example question right here. Okay, folks, so what is this question all about? Let's read about it, shall we? So when it comes to any question in the AAA exam, what is the first thing that you should read here? The requirement, isn't it? So let's read about the requirement, shall we? Comment on the ethical issues arised and the actions of your firm should take in response to the client's request. And this is for six marks. Okay. When you read the requirement and when you read the mark location or marks available for this particular requirement, for this particular requirement, you have six marks, isn't it? So when you see the mark location, you have to identify, you have to think about the number of points that you would write in the exam. Okay, folks, so since we have six marks available and we know that for each issue, I would get a minimum of two marks. 
what will I think? I will, I should think that I should write at least a minimum of three issues, isn't it, from the scenario or even more depending upon the uh, information that we have within the scenario as well. Okay, folks, so that's basically something that you have to plan when you read the requirement itself. And then now that we know as to what is to be done here, we can read through the scenario and identify the issues, isn't it? So let's read through the scenario, shall we? The audit committee of Mumbai Coop has asked the partner to consider whether it would be possible for the team to perform a review of the company's internal control systems. So, have we identified any issues here? Any ethical issues perhaps? Most definitely yes, isn't it? Because there is definitely a self-review threat that arises if we, if the auditors perform a review of the internal control system as well. Okay folks, so that's basically something that we can provide. A number of recent incidents have raised concerns among the management team that controls have deteriorated and that this has increased the risk of fraud as well as inefficient commercial practices. The auditor's report for the audit of financial statements of Mumbai Co for the year ended 31st March 2016 was signed a few weeks ago. Mumbai Co is a listed company. Okay, so now we've understood the particular scenario, isn't it? And how many issues have we identified? Just one, isn't it? So we only have identified the issue in relation to the self-review threat, isn't it? However, an additional issue that can come up is regarding taking up managerial responsibility as well, isn't it? So basically, who has the primary responsibility to take uh, to review the internal controls and make sure that it prevents and detects fraudulent activities? It is, of course, the management, isn't it? So if we are reviewing and we are providing absolute recommendations about the internal control systems and various other systems within the organization, then effectively, we as auditors are taking up managerial responsibility, isn't it? Is that allowed? I don't think so, isn't it? Is that allowed for a listed company like Mumbai Co? Most definitely not, isn't it? So that is basically the issue here. So we only have one and yeah, basically we could say that we've identified two issues and based on this particular two issues, I need to score six marks, isn't it? Because there's no more, no more issues available within this particular scenario. So I just have to score six marks here using these two issues. So basically I have to provide around three points for each of the explanations that I'm providing for each of these issues, isn't it? So that's basically the idea here. Okay. So up until now, what have we done? We've read this requirement, we've read the scenario, we've identified the situation and we planned our answer as to how it should look like, isn't it? So now let's take a look at some points that we can provide or how, how exactly can we structure our answer, shall we? So moving on to the next, basically the answer. So what exactly is this answer all about? Let's read through it, shall we? Providing a review of the company's system and controls gives rise to a self-review threat as these controls will then be reviewed by the firm when determining our audit strategy. The firm will be reluctant to highlight errors to adopt a substantive approach during the audit as this may highlight deficiencies in the firm's work on the additional service. And this is for one mark. So in this particular paragraph, what have I done? I've identified the issue from the scenario, that's one thing. And have I explained the situation? Most definitely yes, isn't it? And as I stated earlier, for identification and explanation, you will get one mark, isn't it? So that's basically how you get one mark over here. So that's basically the first issue. And then I will, I'm also explaining the second issue as well. Okay, folks, what is the second issue? The design of systems and control is a management responsibility, isn't it? We've stated that. Uh, so a review of such may give rise to a situation where the auditor is assuming management responsibility by taking on the role of management. So I've identified the issue in relation to management responsibility and I've explained it yet again. How many marks will I get for that? Another one mark. Okay, so two marks down, four to go, isn't it? So how exactly will you get these four marks? By stating, of course, the safeguards or course of action that should be taken, isn't it? Because we already lear learned about the exam technique, isn't it? First of all, what do we do? We identify the risk. We've already done that. We then evaluate or explain that particular issue. We've already done that as well. And then we also, we, we would also need to provide the safeguard as well as course of action that should be adopted as well. So let's take a look at the safeguards or course of action here, shall we? 
So can we take any sort of safeguards in such a uh, situation where we have a self-review threat? We may have, isn't it? We, we could have taken something, books such as using separate teams maybe, that's basically something that we can do. However, there's a catch to that, isn't it? Kumbayko is a listed company. So is there any safeguards since this particular organization is a listed company? I don't think so, isn't it? So even though there is no safeguards, we can just point out that fact, okay folks? We can point out the fact that there are no safeguards to reduce this particular level of risk to an acceptable level, okay folks? So that is basically how you gain another mark. So let's take a look at that, shall we? The court states that the threat to independence of undertaking management responsibilities for an audit client is so significant that there are no safeguards which could reduce the threat to an acceptable level. So I've stated that there are no safeguards and I get, I've received another one mark. Okay, folks. So three marks have been scored here. Okay, folks. Now, how exactly can I add value to this particular point? Let's take a look at that, shall we? So what more points can be added here? As you can see here, I've provided a point in relation to management responsibilities. Isn't it? So let's take a look. Management responsibility can be avoided if the client takes responsibility for monitoring the reports made and taking decisions on recommendations. So if you think about it, the auditors are allowed to recommend the management as to what the appropriate controls should have been, isn't it? So we do that. We have also learned that when it comes to the audit and assurance paper as well. We know that. However, the problem here is when the auditors take a decision, isn't it? So what we could do is we could just ask the management to take the final decision. Okay, folks, that's some that's a way to avoid a management responsibility from uh, occurring, isn't it? Such an issue from occurring. That's a true statement. However, there's a, yet again a problem with that. Okay, folks. So we have provided a possible safeguard. We have mentioned that, and I will get one mark for it because I'm demonstrating to the examiner that I do know this particular point, and uh, this is something that we could have done as well. Okay, folks. However. There is yet again a catch to it, isn't it? We cannot apply this particular safeguard when it comes to, or we cannot take much risk when it comes to a listed audit client. Okay, folks, that is yet again something that I've pointed out as well. Why am I pointing all this out? Because I'm just presenting to the examiner that I'm, I know all of these stuff, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, folks, that is how you, you add value to your answer. Just present the uh, things that you have noted from the scenario. Okay, folks, that's basically it. And what else? Uh, let's take a look at the next point that is, however, as this is a listed client, we are prohibited from undertaking internal audit services, uh, which relates to the significant part of controls over financial reporting. This is a true statement, isn't it? We've learned about that throughout our syllabus. So definitely we will get another one mark for stating this particular rule as well. So how many marks have we scored as of now? We've scored a total of five marks, isn't it? One more mark available. So up until now, we mentioned all the safeguards as well as all the generic rules that we've learned throughout the syllabus as well. Now, what can we mention? We can also mention a course of action, isn't it? So since this is the issue, what should be the course of action that we should adopt? That is something that we can most definitely mention as well. And what exactly would that be? That would be uh, to decline the additional work. Okay, folks, just stick with auditing the particular client. Do not be involved in any sort of uh, review of internal audit. Just politely decline the offer for providing additional services for this particular listed client. That's basically the course of action that we can adopt as well. Yet again, we have one mark, isn't it? So have you scored the total six marks? Most definitely yes, isn't it? So this is how you can present your answer when it comes to an ethics question. What do you have to do? First of all, identify and explain the issues and then provide a safeguard or a course of action or even both if you want to as well. And of course, also state the generic knowledge that you have uh, that would be relevant for the situation. Okay, folks, don't just state plain knowledge such as, as to what is the ethical threat or what, what exactly is a self-review threat, etc. But rather, you have to relate your answer specifically to the scenario. That is what the examiner expects you to provide as an answer. Okay, folks, remember that. So, uh, as you can see here, there is also a note stating that no marks are awarded for simply listing self-review or 
management responsibility okay folks so just by you know providing that there is a self-review threat in the scenario or there is a management responsibility issue relating to the scenario you won't get any marks for it okay you have to be this very descriptive and very specific as to what you are mentioning in okay folks remember that as they will need to be described before marks are awarded as such ensure that you take time to explain the threats rather than simply writing the terms okay folks rather than uh, plainly stating the generic knowledge that you learn from the syllabus try to use the scenario information and then explain the courses of action taken okay folks, that is how you can effectively tackle an ethics related questions so keep this in mind okay folks so that's basically as to how to score the full available marks for an ethical issue question so that is how you can effectively tackle an ethical issue question. Okay, folks, all you have to do is you just have to identify the issue with in your answer, explain it, and then provide the safeguard or course of action. Okay, folks, this is the same strategy that we have used within our question marathon as well, you know, to practice uh, the exam standard questions, uh, past paper questions, as well as questions within the CBE environment as well. Okay, folks. So that's basically it. Okay, well, that's all what I want to cover in this particular session. And of course, uh, remember, guys, that the question practice aspect in your exam preparation is as equally important as learning the syllabus itself. Okay, folks, so keep on practicing questions and uh, prepare well for your exam. Okay, folks, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. All right, wait, wait. It seems that most of you who are watching this video have not subscribed to our channel. You would miss the new videos and the updates. Subscribe now and press the bell icon.